Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and I am happy that you are joining me for yet another episode and yet another author interview. I say this every week when I have an author interview, but I am loving this part of the podcast. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am because I really love sitting down with these authors and talking about their books and their writing style and what they read. I just really love getting to know them and their personalities. And this week I had the pleasure of sitting down with author Jeannie M. Dixon about her debut novel, Grounded Hearts. Grounded Hearts is a World War II novel set in Ireland, so it's historical fiction. It is romance, and it is also Christian, so it falls under those three different genres, those three different categories. Let me give you the description of the book, and this comes from the author's website, JeannieMDixon.com. In the midst of World War II, Ireland has declared herself neutral. Troops found on Irish soil must be reported and interned, no matter which side they are fighting for. When midwife Nan O'Neill finds a wounded young Canadian pilot at her door, she knows she's taking a huge risk by letting him in. Not only is she a widow living alone, but if caught harboring a combatant, she'll face imprisonment. Still, something compels Nan to take in flyboy Dutch Whitney, an RAF pilot pilot whose bomber has just crashed over County Clare. While she tends to his wounds and gives him a secret place of refuge, the two begin to form a mutual affection and an unbreakable bond. But Nan has another secret, one that has racked her with guilt since her husband's death and made her questioned ever loving again. As Nan and Dutch plan his escape, can he help restore her faith? So that is the description for the book Grounded Hearts by Jeannie M. Dixon. As I mentioned, it's uh, historical fiction, and I didn't know, and I love historical fiction, and I was a history major in college, so I'm actually embarrassed to admit that I did not know that Ireland was neutral during World War II. I'd never realized that. And actually, in speaking to a couple of other people, um, they hadn't realized it either. Turns out that not a lot of people know that Ireland was neutral during World War II. So this was really fascinating to get a glimpse into a different um, a different part of the world during World War II. I have been going through a phase the last few years where I've been reading a bunch of different World War II novels. So it was really fun to add this one to my repertoire. And as I said, it's also, as you could tell from the description, it's also a romance and it is a uh, Christian fiction. So it has that element of faith and it has the element of the characters not only trying to navigate their lives and navigate what is happening to them and this relationship, but they're also trying to navigate that through the lens of faith. In Nan's case, she is Irish and so she's Catholic, Irish Catholic. And so that definitely plays a role in the book. And I found myself occasionally arguing with the 1940s Catholic theology, but you know, it's very accurate to the time. So uh, it's very good de- depiction of faith. It's a very great, a good depiction of Ireland. It weaves in that historical element so that you get a picture of what it was like to be in Ireland and have Ireland be neutral during World War II. So that's enough for me. That's enough of my blathering about this book, which I really enjoyed. I'm going to let you listen to Jeannie's own words about the writing process and writing this book. So let's turn now to the interview with author Jeannie M. Dixon. Hi, Jeannie. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. Uh, Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. So we are here to talk about your book, Grounded Hearts. But before we talk about the book, I would love for my listeners just to get to know you a little bit. Um, If you want to share whatever you're comfortable sharing, that would be great. Um, Sure. Uh, Well, I was uh, born into an Irish-American family. And I was the only girl with four brothers. And 
and my grandmother lived with us, and she was this constant source of stories about Ireland and about saints and about our ancestors that came before us. Um, and I really credit her and my mom and my aunt for my love of storytelling. Mm-hmm. And you, so four brothers, are they all older? Are you in the middle? Where are you in that birth order? I am the youngest. I am the second to the youngest. So I have one younger brother and the rest of them are, of course, are all older. Right. Wow. That sounds like a very, well, potentially noisy household. It was. It was very noisy, very boisterous, and uh, probably made me the tough woman that I am today. Yes. So did your, you said your grandmother lived with you. Did she grow up in Ireland or? Yeah, she was born in Ireland. And actually my dad also uh, was born in Ireland and, and my aunt except for one who was born in Canada. And he, first they migrated first to Canada. And then in the 30s, they um, immigrated to New York City, to America. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way, in the first generation American. Yeah, wow. So you got you grew up with your grandmother and she told a lot of stories. Um, so Grounded Hearts is set in Ireland. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about Grounded Hearts? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, Granted Hearts, really the germ of the story came from a story that my father actually told me. Uh, he was in the military during World War II, mm -hmm. and he was stationed in, in England, and he was issued a weekend pass, and he decided to go from his base to um, a base in Northern Ireland. And she got a bicycle, and he was going to go across the border to visit family who were nearby. And he said he pedaled across the border, and a few minutes into his ride, he was stopped by a member of the Garda, which is the Irish National Police. Mm -hmm. And the officer told him that he had to turn his army jacket inside out, or he'd get arrested as a combatant, and he'd be sent to the K-Lines internment camp. Wow. Uh, so Ireland was neutral during World War II, and they had to do that to comply with, with their neutrality. So my father, you know, said he did as a directed, and there was no further uh, incident, uh, which was fortunate because there were over 240 soldiers on both sides of the conflicts that were interned in Ireland during the war. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because I didn't, I didn't know that. I, I, I don't know why I didn't know that Ireland was neutral, but it was really interesting to find that out. It, it is an interesting fact, and not a lot of people know about it. Um, you know, and of course, there's been a lot of World War II stories recently. Mm -hmm. Now that it's you know pretty pretty far in our past, right? Um, but not too many people do. There hasn't been a whole lot about Ireland, and uh, you know, it was a really interesting time for them. They called it the emergency, which is a very Irish way of putting it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they were really between a rock and a hard place. I know they, they caught a lot of flack from the English for being neutral, but the way they saw it, from what I, I understand, is that if they went in with England, with the Allies, then the Nazis would just run them over and just, you know, they had no defenses, completely bomb them. Mm -hmm. And if they went with the, with the um, Axis, the Germans, then England would have a reason to bomb them. And, you know, basically get rid of them, like the, mm -hmm. you know, some would say they've been trying to do for a long time. Um, so they really were between a rock and a hard place. And uh, there was some sympathy for for uh, the Axis, I think, when the war first started. But certainly by the end, and all the atrocities came into view, they were really always very pro allies. Um, and as far as, you know, the internment, they had to do that, of course, to stay neutral. Um, however, toward, certainly towards the end of the war, they basically did a wink-wink and let the Allies cross over to the north. So how much research did you do in the background of Ireland in World War II? Well, I really had to do quite a bit. I mean, some of the stuff came, of course, from family stories. And, you know, once I got a hold of this idea of, the, you know, what if? Mm hmm uh, you know, I bugged my dad about it. Um, so the story has actually been percolating for a very long time. Cause unfortunately, he passed away uh, about eight years ago. Hmm. Um, 
But yeah, I had to do research on it. It wasn't that easy. There's not a lot written about Ireland in World War II. I found a couple books mm-hmm. that were really great, and of course, a couple of websites. Um, and then, as far as you know, the sense of being able to feel the like being in Ireland since I lived there as a kid, I you know had really vivid memories of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so. That part, um, I just had to dig down and find it. Right, right. And you actually bring up, you, you're able to weave in a lot of that history and a lot of the um, the reasons behind the neutrality and the way people felt about it, you know, the, the differing sides and, and why people felt they should be neutral and, and or not into the story. That's all woven in really nicely. We are going to hear more from author Jeannie M. Dixon about the story, about the characters, about the plot, etc. But we do have to take our first break of the podcast, so stay tuned and I will be right back. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I'm speaking this week with author Jeannie M. Dixon about her debut novel, Grounded Hearts. Let's get back to that interview. Talk a little bit then about the story itself and the characters. Um, Well, again, I I just kind of became fascinated with that time area in Ireland. And I did the what if a pilot came to a midwife and needed help Mm -hmm. you know what how would she deal with that um so that was really how i started the idea and then of course you know you it it takes off from there you know i mean it's so i mean it's set um she the the um midwife nan knows that it's a it's a great risk for her to help this guy right um she could be arrested and she's been threatened with that uh, by the by the local authority, um, but she takes the risk anyway. And uh, you know they really, she and Dutch, who's the RAF um, choir, um, they really begin to love each other uh, through the process. And he helps her to overcome, you know, this terrible feeling of guilt that she has over her husband's death. Mm-hmm. And the way, um, while she's helping him to escape over the border, he's really helping her to escape from this terrible guilt that she carries about her husband's death. Right. And I was interested, um, as I was reading, the women really drive this story. Um, Dutch is the, the main character, the male main character, and... Um, he's he's you know he's got his quirks and his personality you know uh things in his personality but the the other men in the story uh they they kind of get in the way a lot <laughs> it's maybe a nice way to put yeah. it um to, to, to varying yeah. degrees i mean there's the one guy that's just a complete jerk and then there's other other men that are just kind of mm, i don't even know what word to use but it, i it's a really a, a women driven story very much so. Um, they, uh, you know, I grew up with all these really strong women, uh, and part of my favorite part of growing up was when they would get together and sit around. We'd sit around the table, and um, you know, they'd tell stories and they'd laugh and they'd joke and they'd rant about their men. Um, it's not that they didn't love them, but they still wanted to rant about them. Right. Um, so yeah, there's very strong women in in the story, and they do drive the the action yeah and uh, you know and uh, also i'd like i also wanted to have you know a lot of humor in the book um because i think that's that's always been a very big part of of what i experienced growing up even though there was always some very painful moments we could always find some humor in it Mm -hmm. so this is um it's historical fiction it's romance uh but it, it could also be classified under christian writing so talk a little bit about your faith and how that influences your writing well you know i i come from a from a christian point of view mm-hmm. and uh it's important to me to view the world in that way i would say that it really brings me to feel that uh you know we're all sinners and we all make mistakes 
and that's what it is to be human. Mm-hmm. And the wonderful thing about being a Christian is that we can ask God for our forgiveness for our mistakes, and He grants us amazing grace without any strings attached. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and I like really strong moral uh, characters in these stories. Uh, you know, they can still be edgy and maybe not the nice, nicest people, but there has to be some moral core to it. And I, of course, I find that through my faith. Mm-hmm. And it, that that really comes through in the book, I think, because you do see how their faith lives influence their regular lives, but you you made them very human. You know, they've got they've got feelings of guilt. They've got, you know, good senses of humor. They still have feelings of, you know, romantic attraction, lust even, but underlying that is this central core of their faith. Yeah, I, I hope that's how it came across. And of course, in uh, Southern Ireland, they would be Catholic. Right. And all the bad that goes with being Catholic. Um, but I think that was really important to the story. You know, I couldn't just like gloss over that. Right. Uh, in terms of your writing, when did you begin writing? Is it something that you've always wanted to do? I pretty much have always been a writer. Um, you know, I think the first time I tried to write a novel, I was in sixth grade, and I was so mad at my brothers, which was pretty common. At the time. <laughs> I can imagine. I can't even, yeah, and I can't even remember why I was mad at them, but I'm sure they gave me reasons. But I decided I was going to write a murder mystery and take care of all of them. <laughs> That's great. But, of course, it only took me one chapter um, to finish them off, but it was very satisfying. <laughs> I bet. Well, you were angry. You killed them right away in one chapter. Yeah, one after the other. Um, but uh, that's not to say I don't love my brothers. But, well, sure. Uh, kids will be kids. Yes. Who hasn't uh, wanted to, you know? Yeah, but then, you know, I... Pardon? I, I was just thinking, who hasn't wanted to, you know, do away with their brother, at least fictionally? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and then, you know, I've always, uh, you know, done the, I always liked writing. Um, out of high school, I actually uh, danced classical ballet for a couple of years. Oh, wow. Uh, and um, I really loved it. I'm not sure it really loved me back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ended up, you know, going back to college and getting a business degree, which is kind of like the complete opposite. But the writing thing never went away. I was always the person that had to write everything. Um, and then... Um, you know, I really kind of got the bug to really start writing again. And it was um, right before I had my children. And once I had my children, I really admire women that can write and raise children at the same time, because I found it really difficult. Sure. So I kind of had like a lapse between that. But then once I got into um, grade school and in high school, I was able to focus on it more. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's been a long road and it's, um, it's, I would say that to anyone who's aspiring to write, just be in it for the long haul. Chances are it's going to take you longer than you think. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, um, do you have a certain schedule when you write? Do you try to keep to that? Do you have a favorite place to write? What does that look like for you? Well, I have an office in my home, and it's um, crammed full of books and Barbie dolls. (laughs) I, you know, I'm kind of addicted to Barbie dolls. My husband thinks they're really creepy uh, because they're just like sitting here looking at me, but I find comfort in them. I think they're funny and they're kind of my muses. Yeah. When I get, when I start a new story, there's like a certain pack of dolls that I take from like central casting and I'll dress them as characters and have them on on the desk. And I know that probably does sound a little insane, but. um, Whatever (laughs) works though. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and, you know, fortunately, I am married to this great guy, and he is a software engineer, and I don't know how people who don't have access to someone that understands computers can do any of this, because I'm always going, uh, honey, what is, what, why, and then, you know, he kind of groans and sits down, and he fixes it. Right. <laughs> that is good to have around, I agree. Because technology yeah. is great until it isn't. <laughs> and then if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know how to fix it. Exactly. Yeah. So what's next? Are you working on anything right now? I am. I'm working on a contemporary romance set in Ireland, of course. And it's, uh, it's about three sisters who um, 
are escaping their father scandal, insider scandal in the States, and they decide they're going to go to Ireland and open a B&B and wedding venue, but of course nothing goes the way they want it to go, and it's also about, of course, the Irishman that they meet and fall in love with. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. And do you think you'll ever return to this world um, from Grounded Hearts? I mean, you've kind of wrapped up Nan and Dutch's story, but there's some other characters like Dr. Mann. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by her. Do you think you'd ever return to that story or those characters? I would love to. I would love to return to that story. And actually, that is the story I would like to tell next because she's, uh, she's such a great character. I just, I just love her um, because, you know, she's smart, but she's like, you know, she's got some issues and she's pretty insecure and, um, I would love to do that story. Unfortunately, um, the imprint that I debuted with, that's an Amazon imprint called Waterfall, mm -hmm. they closed their fiction line. Uh, they're still doing um, other nonfiction titles. So I'm kind of without a home here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I hope someday to get back to that story. You know, I could see... I would like to do, I have ideas for other stories too set in that time period in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of um, hunkering down and figuring out the stories and then writing it. Yeah. Actually, there's there's several stories I think that could come from that world. Well, thank you. I, I think it is a world that's very rich in, in stories uh, and characters that would be fun to follow to write about. I'm going to jump in here one more time for our second break of the podcast, but stay tuned and we will be right back. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Here is the conclusion of my author interview with Jeannie M. Dixon. You said you have an office full of not only Barbie dolls, but books. So um, mm -hmm. who are your favorite authors? I'm, I'm pretty eclectic when it comes to, to my reading, um, but I do have a few that I you know, really love. And of course, um, Mae Benchy. I really like, uh, for a romance, I like Kristen Higgins. Okay. Because she's really funny and she's great at world building. And um, for women's fiction and kind of a general fiction, I like Susan Meisner. Uh, she writes these wonderful um, time slip stories. And I'd say my guilty pleasure is probably Harlan Coben. I still like a good uh, murder mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're not killing off your own family members. Yeah, when I'm not killing off my own family. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so you touched on this a little bit earlier with um, what you would say to aspiring writers. Do you have anything else that you would, from your perspective of writing, what you would tell them besides, you know, just sticking with it? Yeah, I think it's really important that you find a community of writers to belong to. Um, for me, I belong to Romance Writers of America, and we have a really active local chapter, which is great because they have a lot of authors and speakers that come in. Um, so whatever your genre is, you know, find find a find a group to belong to because the people that really understand what you're going through are going to be other writers. Mm -hmm. And then and then the other thing I would say is um, attend writers conferences. I met both my agent and my editor at a writers conference, so that's really important. And uh, the other thing is really work on your craft because it really does come down to the book. Um, other, you know, other things are important like social media and stuff, but it really does come down to the book and what the story is about and how well you can craft it. And that just takes time. It's like, I kind of uh, think it's like becoming a ballet dancer, you know, you, you don't, um, you don't do swan lake the day after you start dancing. Right. It takes many years of practice. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, uh, speaking of social media, where can people find you on social media? Um, well, you can find me on Facebook at Jeannie M. Dixon and on Twitter at, at JMDixon1 and at Instagram at Jeannie Dixon. But I think if you just type in my name in any of those, um, any of those platforms, you'll, uh, you'll find me and you'll see my picture. I have a picture of me wearing a hat because mm -hmm. I am a hat girl. I always wear hats. I love hats. 
uh, do you have a website? I do. It's uh, geniemdixon.com. Okay, easy enough to remember. Is there anything else that you would like for people to know about either you or your books or anything in the writing process? Well, I'd, I'd just like to say that um, being a debut author has been quite a ride. Um, I think it kind of reminds me of when I was going to have my first daughter. I read all the books and I talked to all the moms and I thought I knew what I was in for. And just like the debut book, um, it's always great in theory, but when you actually have it, it's kind of another thing. And it's always, of course, very personal as to your circumstances. Right. Um, so it's uh, it's been a rather steep learning curve. Um, it's been it's been fun most of the time, right? Um, but there are things that kind of, that came up that I really hadn't dealt with before as an, an unpublished author, like you know uh, reviews and um, really a lot more social media and just dealing with all that uh, professional stuff you don't deal with unless you are published. Yeah, I'm sure it's different for everyone, but that you can't fully prepare for it no matter how much you, you know, read or talk to other people because everybody's experience is going to be different. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your weekend to talk to me. I really appreciate it. It was fun. And um, thank you for your book, Grounded Hearts, and I wish you all the luck in your next endeavor. Well, thank you. You know, I wanted to mention one more thing sure. about the book. Um if you like audiobooks, the narrator for my book is just fabulous. Uh, she is a Irish um, actor. Mm -hmm. Her name is Alana Curran Collins, and she has the most delightful Irish accent. Oh, that's awesome. I love audiobooks. Yes, yeah, so if you like audiobooks, I would highly recommend um, that version of the book. Okay. Is that on Audible, or do you know where you can find it? It's on Audible. Um, you can find it on Amazon. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And once again, I want to thank my interview guest, author Jeannie M. Dixon. It was a pleasure to interview her. It was a pleasure to read her debut novel, Grounded Hearts. I hope you enjoyed this interview, and I hope that you will join me again next time when I will probably be having another author interview, uh, trying to get that scheduled right now. There's been a little bit of a hiccup in getting that scheduled, but hopefully things will work out and I'll have another author interview for you next week. You can always check social media to see who I will be interviewing because I usually put something up a few days beforehand and then you'll know what's going on. Speaking of social media, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. You can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. And you can download those podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, any app that you use on your mobile devices. Thank you again to Jeannie M. Dixon for joining me. Thank you for listening. But now I want you to go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.